How are you? Thank you. 2022 be adopted. Say aye. And do it again. Say nay. The ayes have it. The votes and proceedings of Tuesday, the 13th day of December 2022, is hereby approved and adopted. Leader of the Senate. I represent the Rivers Central District. Order 10, 11, 20, 21, and 22. Petitions. One act to repeal the National Information Technology Development Agency Act and for matters collected there to 2022. Second reading taken. The bill is referred to the Committee on ICT and Cybersecurity to report back within two weeks. Leader of the Senate. English colleagues. My name is Senator Obasani, representing Corona Central. I rise to move that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the Committee on Banking, Insurance, and Other Financial Institutions on the confirmation of the nomination of Mrs. Aisha Indanusa Ahmad and Edward Lamitek Adamu for appointments as Deputy Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. I so move, Mr. President. Any second for the motion? Yes. Senator Ajibola, please. You may go ahead and present now. 2022, consider the request of Mr. President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federation. Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, for the confirmation of the appointment of Mrs. Aisha Indanusa Ahmad and Mr. Edward Lamitek Adamu as Deputy Governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria. I refer them to the Committee on Banking, Insurance, and Other Financial Institutions for further legislative actions. President, with your permission, I would like to go straight to the findings. Thank you, Mr. President. At the end of the, ex of the screen exercise of the nominees, the committee findings were as follows. One, that their appointments is in accordance with the provision of Section 82 of the CBN Act 2007. Two, that the nominees possesses the academic qualifications, technical knowledge, and professional experiences to be reappointed deputy governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Three, that the nominees have served as deputy governors of the CBN from 2018 to date. Four, that the committee did not receive any petition against their nominations for the appointment as deputy governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Five, that the nominees have been cleared by the Nigeria Police Force, Department of State Services, DSS, and possesses the Code of Conduct Acknowledgement Sleep. Recommendations. 
The Committee on Banking, Insurance, and Other Financial Institutions, having screened the nominees and been satisfied with their experiences, suitability, and academic qualifications, hereby recommends that the Senate do confirm the reappointment of Mrs. Aisha Indanusa Ahmed and Mr. Edward Lamitek Adamu as Deputy Governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Those in favor that Mrs. Aisha Undanesu Ahmed be approved as the Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. Lamitek Adamu as Deputy Governor of the Central Bank. CBN. Those in favor that he be approved say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise to second the motion that uh, we revert to plenary to, for chair to report progress. I so second. We will consider the report of the Committee on Banking, Insurance, and other financial institutions on the screening of Ms. Mr. President's nominees for appointment as Deputy Governors of CBN and approve the nominations of Mrs. Aisha Undanasa Ahmad and Mr. Edward Lamitek Adamu as Deputy Governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria and CBN. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Whole? Yes. Confirmation. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Mrs. Aisha Undenasu Ahmed as the Central Bank of Nigeria and CBN as the Deputy Governor of Central Bank, CBN. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Edward Lamita Kadamu as Deputy Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. The nomination of Mrs. Aisha Undanasu Ahmed as Deputy Governor of CBN is hereby confirmed. The nomination of Edward Lamita Kadamu as Deputy Governor of CBN is hereby confirmed. Congratulations. I rise to move that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the Committee on Banking, Insurance and Other Financial Institutions on the implementation of cashless policy and the new withdrawal limits. I so move, Mr. President. Seconda. The Senate at the sitting on Wednesday, 7 December 2022, mandated the Committee on Banking, Insurance, and Other Financial Institutions, while well screening the Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, should also interact with them on banks' present cashless policy and the new withdrawal limits. In line with the above mandate, the Committee engaged the Deputy Governors during the screening on the subject matter. Given the reactions these circulars generated in the opening speech of the chairman, clarifications were sought on the rationale for this policy in particular. The new daily cash withdrawal limit of 20,000, the CBM was asked to provide insight and clarification on this issue to the Senate. It is against this back backdrop that the CBN was asked to provide comprehensive information on the following. Implementation of the cashless policy since 2012. Justifications for some of the bank's recent pronouncements and programs, programmed activities till the January 9, 2023, effective date for the nationwide rollout of the policy. Mr. President, distinguished senators, you may wish to recall the recent pronouncement by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, on October, in October 2022, on the redesign of some of the denomination of the Naira Nose 200, 500, and 1,000, and circular of December 6, 2022, on cash withdrawal limits and nationwide implementation of the cashless policy. Overview of the cashless policy 2012 to 2019. Sections 2D and 
47 of the CBN Act 2007, as amended, empowers the CBN to promote a sound and stable financial system and credible efficient payment system. In pursuance of this mandate, the CBN issued a cashless policy on April 1, 2012, following in-depth studies and various stakeholder engagements. The policy commenced on a pilot basis in Lagos on April 1, 2012. With the overall objective of reducing cash intensity in the economy, with attendant huge costs of currency management at risk from cash-based transactions, encourage electronic trans transactions and enhance the Nigerian payment system. The features of the policy included one, limit on free cash transactions on, on withdrawal allotments were prescribed accordingly, a daily transaction limit of 500,000 and 3 million for free cash withdrawals allotment was imposed for individuals and corporate customers respectively. Two, processing fees for transactions withdrawal allotment above prescribed limit was fixed at 3% and 2% for withdrawal allotment by individual, and 5% and 3% for withdrawals allotment by corporates, respectively. Three, third party checks above 150,000 were disallowed from being cash over the counter. Four, exemptions were granted to embassies and diplomatic missions due to international treaties signed with Nigeria. Five, waivers were granted to microfinance banks, ministries, departments, and agencies of federal and state governments for lodgement into revenue accounts. Following the successes recorded during the pilot phase, the policy was extended to five other states, Abia, Anambra, Kano, Ogun, and River States, and the Federal Capital Territory in July 2013 with banks customers giving three months moratorium on the payments of processing fees for cash transaction over these prescribed limits. The processing fees fee on excess lodgements above the prescribed limits for withdrawal and lodgements was, however, stepped down temporarily in 2014 to allow more citizens to fully embrace alternative electronic payment platforms and ensure further development and expansion of financial access points before imposition of the penal, penal fees. Plan nationwide in Point of order, leader of the Senate. In accordance with our order A. Thank you, Mr. President. Plan nationwide implementation of the policy earlier stated for April to October 2017 was also temporarily suspended for the same reasons. Since then, the cashless policy has remained in force in six states, Lagos, Ibia, Anambra, Kano, Oguna Rivers, and the Federal Capital Territory. The cashless policy, September 2019 to October 2022. The recognition of significant strides in financial inclusion expansion of financial access point, proliferation in e-banking and recent changes in stamp duties collection. The CBN on September 17, 2019 announced implementation of full cashless policy in the Federal Capital Territory and six states, Lagos, Abia, Anambra, Ogun, and Rivers that were currently operating the, poli the policy. The bank also approved the reintroduction of charges on excess cash deposits by individuals and corporates above established limits that was temporarily suspended in 2017 in the cashless policy status as below. This is the table, is the individual above 500,000, 3% and 2%, corporate above 3 million, 5% and 3% respectively. The cashless policy October 2022 to date. 
further to the launch of the redesign Naira announced by Mr. President on Wednesday, November, 20, 20, November 23, 2022. The CBN on December 5th, 2022 released a circular on new cash withdrawals limit in line with its cashless policy mandate. The CBN approved the following. One, the introduction of charges on excess cash withdrawals by individual and corporates above established limits in cashless policy states. Account type, withdrawal limits, processing fees for withdrawal. Mr. President, with your permission, can I go to the conclusion and recommendations? No, 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 no. Please proceed. I want everyone to be fully appraised of the content of this report. Please proceed. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. President. Individual above 100,000 per week, 5%. Corporate above 3 million per week, 10%. Third party checks over the counter withdrawal limits to 50,000, ATM withdrawal 20 per day and 100,000 uh, per week, POS withdrawal 20,000 daily. Two, enhanced due diligence requirement for cash withdrawals above certain thresholds, 5 million and 10 million for individual and corporate organization respectively, which will only be allowed under compelling circumstances not exceeding once in a month. Three, nationwide implementation of cashless policy by January 9, 2023. It is pertinent to note that processing fees are already applied to withdrawals above limits of 500,003 million for individual and corporate organization respectively in the federal capital and six states. The circular only reduced the limits on cash withdrawals and expanded expanded the scope of its application nationwide effective January 9, 2023, a response to significant evolution of the Nigerian payment system and widespread availability of a plethora of financial touch points and electronic payment options to all Nigerian citizens. Justification for the instatement of full cashless policy and nationwide implementation. Growth in electronic channels ad adoption. Most stakeholders have embraced alternative payment channels as shown by the astro astronomical increase in electronic transaction statistics on various channels, according to NIBSS data. POS transactions increased by 13.041%. Which is equivalent to 6.32 trillion from 48.46 billion in 2012 to 6.80 trillion at, the, at end October 2022. Electronic transaction increased significantly by 7.768%. That is 302.2 trillion from 3.89 trillion in 2012 to 306.09 trillion in the nine months to end October 2022. Check transaction reduced by 75%, 5.63 trillion from 7.4 8 trillion in 2012 to 1.85 trillion in October 2022. Expansion of alternative e payment platforms. SMEs and other businesses have various options and channels available for them to col for collecting legitimate payments for goods and services, including bank transfers, POS, MPOS, MCash, mobile money internet banking, USSD codes, agents, QR codes, in era. These channels are also being adopted across the country, including markets and rural communities. Expansion in financial access points. Financial access points, ATM, POS, agents, and MCash
have also witnessed significant increase since the implementation of the cashless policy. Of note is the licensing of several deposit money banks, conventional and Islamic banks, payments service bank, and microfinance bank with multiplicative impact of the number of ATMs, POS, and agents available across the Federation. The telcos and mobile money operators are also driving the expansion of agents' networks across the Federation. The Shared Agents Network Expansion Facilities Initiative of the CBN and the Bankers Committee currently has more than 1,400,000 agents nationwide. Improvement in financial inclusion statistics. Financial inclusion has recorded significant improvement in Nigeria, according to Ifina, 64.1% of adult population were financially included as at 2020. Extensive engagements across multiple stakeholders, cashless policy was first launched in 2012 and several engagements were held across multiple stakeholders. By January 2023, the initiative will be entering its 11 year and stakeholders will have been adequately enlightened. The initial go live date for its implementation nationally was 2015. Promotion of an efficient payment system in public interest. It is in the public interest to promote an efficient payment system via the cashless policy, which helps reduce the punitive cost of cash processing, obtained passed on to bank customers. It is instructive to note that the implementation of the cashless policy in six states resulted in reduction in the cost of currency management by 15.20% from 36.97 billion to 31.35 billion between 2013 to 2014. The trend, however, reversed in 2014, following the suspension of cash deposit charges in the six states, currently handling costs increasing by 17.20% between 2014 and 2015 following the suspension. The cost of currency management has been on the increase since then. Total cost of currency management for 10 months to end October 2022 was 47.25 billion Nada. Compliance with best practice. The policy is in line with the CBN quest to adopt international best practices and international conventions, especially in view of recent reputational damage, with some Nigerians perpetuating advanced fee fraud. Statutory responsibility of the central bank. The CBN's mandate and responsibilities under the CBN Act 2007 as amended empowers it to promote a sound, stable financial system and credible, efficient payment system Section 2D, Section 47 of the CBN Act, and the policies were issued pursuant to this legal provision. This action are well within this mandate. Clarifying common misconceptions on the CBN cashless policy. There are many misconceptions of the cashless policy which are addressed below. Currency denomination of 5 naira, 10, 20, 50, and 100 remain legal tender. Are unaffected by the Naira redesign policy and are available for use across the country, including at markets and rural areas and informal sector of the economy. There are currently no processing fees applied to cash deposits. A limited amount can be deposited without charge to enable seamless and unrestricted deposit of any notes affected by the currency redesign. 
the processing fee on cashless withdrawal are not new, as these have been in place in Lagos since. No, 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 no. So the processing fees on cash withdrawals, not cashless. Cash withdrawals, right? Okay. Sorry, Mr. President, on cash. FCT since July 2013. The charge applies on the excess over the prescribed limit only, not on the entire transaction amount. For instance, withdrawal of 150 by individual fee is excess over 100,000 limit, that is 50,000 times 5%, which is equal to 2,500 naira. Withdrawal of 600,000 by a corporate fee, by corporate fee is excess over 500 limit. That is 100,000 times 10 percent, which is equivalent to 10,000 naira. The policy did not prohibit cash transaction above the prescribed limits. Such transaction shall attract the processing fees to serve as incentive for account owners to embrace more efficient electronic payment channels. Cash withdrawal above 5 million and 10 million for individuals and corporate organizations respectively will be subject to enhanced due diligence requirements. The policy applies nationwide in recognition of the plethora of financial touch points that are available in all the states of the Federation. Nationwide implementation is effective January 9, 2023. Framework for the nationwide roll of, rollout of cashless policy by January 9, 2023. Wells acknowledging the significant benefit to the economy from the implementation of the cashless policy. The CPN is also cognizant of the need for engagement with the key stakeholders and comprehensive awareness across the six geopolitical zones of the Federation covering urban, rural, and all local government areas. Accordingly, the nationwide implementation of a cashless policy bill for January 9, 2023 shall be preceded by massive stakeholders engagement that aims to stimulate positive public interest and understanding of the policy and information on e-channels and alternative payment solutions for households, SMEs, etc. A comprehensive communication plan has been developed in this respect. Stakeholders to be engaged include drivers of alternative payments, system in communities, markets, industries, hubs, industry hubs, Etc. A job, a job partial map of available financial access point is also being completed and shall be made public by December 31st, 2022. This is to inform all stakeholders of the locations of physical and electronic financial access points where they can process transactions electronically. The CBN shall continue to monitor the impact of the implementation of the policy on citizens and the economy and may be flexible on the withdrawal limits in response to the feedback received. Conclusion. The committee wishes to draw the attention of the Senate to the significant achievement recorded in the Nigerian payment system, uh, payment system since the cashless policy was first introduced in 2012 as follows. One. Nigeria has been adjourned. Africa's undisputed real-time and digital payment leader with over 3.7 billion real-time transactions in 2021. Two, this translates to a ranking of six in terms of the world's most developed real-time payments behind only India, China, Thailand, Brazil, and South Korea. Three, Uptake of digital and real-time payments also helped Nigeria unlock 3.2 billion US dollars of additional economic output in 2021, representing about 0.67% of the country's 
GDP. The central bank latest action on Naira redesign and nationwide implementation of cashless policy are intended to further sustain this achievement in the quest to foster a safe, credible, and efficient payment system that is the pride of all Nigerians and the envy of the world. It is neither targeted at any segment of the society nor intended to disenfranchise hardworking Nigerian citizens and businesses as insulated in some parts. Recommendations. Based on the interaction of the committee with the nominees, the committee hereby recommends as follows. One, that the Central Bank of Nigeria should considerably adjust the withdrawal limits in response to public outcry on the policy. Two, that the committee should continue to embark on aggressive oversight of the CBN on its commitment, on its commitment to flex, flexible adjustment of the withdrawal limit and periodically report outcome to the Senate. Three, that the Senate should support this, the bank in the continuous implementation of trans transformational payments and financial industry initiatives in line with its mandate in accordance with the CBN Act. I have had the benefit of following through the report just uh, presented by the chairman uh, Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance, and Other Financial Institutions. Uh, I say that uh, based on the feedback I get from my constituents upon the, uh, of the rollout of the new CBN guideline, I have certain comments I mean, to make uh, representative of uh, what I gather from my constituents who are basically uh, small traders uh, rural dwellers and the people who may be negatively impacted by the, uh, uh, the, 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 the cashless policy. While it is true, as has been justified by the uh, report being presented, that it is good to have uh, digital platforms and that Nigeria has made uh, the progress in that, I think it's better to speak to facts. Now, let us look at the threshold on page uh, five of the report. The threshold that has been set with respect, is totally unrealistic to have any robust and uh, meaningful life for our people. Above 100,000 per week, you pay processing fee of 5%. The question is looking at the inflation trend in our country and the average cost of living of survivor of every I mean, family in Nigeria, 100,000 per week, then POS withdrawal 20 thousand I mean daily is, is, is uh, uh, terribly the, the, the threshold is going to impact. I'm not oblivious of the fact that the committee had made recommendation on adjustment, but this is not enough. As a committee of the Senate, they ought to also have interacted with certain I mean indices to come up with a recommendation on what should be the adjustment. The recommendation one says that Nigerians Sina Jibola, are you suggesting that the committee should have been specific with amounts? Yes. Won't that be abridging the independence of the bank in line with uh, the provision of Section 2 and uh, what, what section is that, that gives them this uh, power to do this? Don't you think that would be an abridgment on, the, on those powers? And I'm asking this in line, in view of the recommendation already made without any specificity, but you are asking for specificity. Is that correct? President. Yes. President, we that you remember, if you, you, the, the, the logical extension of the contention of Mr. President now is that we don't even have any business talking about the threshold if you cannot make suggestions and specific recommendations. And the law that we have mentioned is made by this ALO chamber. We can as well amend the law. But we have not amended it yet. Are you bringing an amendment now? So I'm suggesting that the threshold should be 500,000 naira, not 100,000. And for withdrawal per daily, should be 100,000. And I say this, that this 
will be in line with what is realistic for society. Law is made for man and to be able to uh, ensure that there's welfare of our people. We cannot allow rigidity to affect the welfare and the running of people in our society. So I will say that it is very important in engaging with the CBN. We cannot just say considerably adjust the withdrawal limit. That doesn't say anything. It's rather vague, nebulous, and add nothing to the aspirations of the Nigerian people who have elected us to be in this allo chamber. Thank you, Mr. President. President, I listened attentively to the report presented by the chairman on, on, on banking. Mr. President, this report gives us an ideal picture of what the economy should be. But in reality, uh, what is happening is different. Uh, the informal sector of the economy in Nigeria is very big and it's not captured in the banking system. Most people, particularly the ones that are living in rural areas, don't go to the bank. They keep their money under the pillow. And there is need for sensitization. There is need for enlightenment in order to make this kind of people to embrace the banking culture. Mr. President, we have 774 local government in this country. I can assure you that only about 60% of this local government are covered by the bank. They have their branches in more than maybe 60% of the 774 local government. The remaining ones, uh, they don't have banks. So it is difficult to really um, force these people to embrace banking culture. And if you do so, believe me, it is going to be with hardship. And we are sitting here in the Hadar Chamber to make laws for the good governance of this country, for the welfare and well-being of our people. And anything that will bring difficulty, we should try to simplify it. We should try to uh, solve it for them. So I support the idea of uh, E -banking. I support the idea of cashless policy, but we should do it with caution. It is good that uh, in the report, in the recommendation, it has been stated that uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria should considerably adjust the withdrawal limits in response to the public outcry. Mr. President, the public outcry is too much. If you read newspapers and what is contained in the social media. Believe me, people are very much against this policy. But we know it is good for the economy. We know with time, uh, if we give it about two to three years, it will be embraced and it will be good for the running of this country. Corruption will reduce. Uh, 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 I'm robbery, people that break houses, uh, uh, people, the bandits that are demanding for ransom will considerably be reduced, but it is not, I have the floor. Let, let me wait. You are protected. One, one more minute, Senator Alero. Senator Alero, special consideration, one more minute. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, so what I'm saying is that uh, Nigeria economy is still a rural economy. And uh, what we are trying to do now is equating it with the economy in Europe and even uh, some countries that are newly industrialized, like Korea, uh, Brazil, and what has been mentioned in this report. So we should be very cautious in implementing this policy. There should be flexibility. 2012, and uh, we are in 2022. That's about 10 years ago. I say this in light of, uh, excuse me? Uh, 
it, I, 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 I understand that. Eh? That was meant to put everybody on notice. And that is pilot, and at some point, it will go around the entire uh, country. I, I just thought I should point that out, you know. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, with being modest, I've been an investment banker for over 15 years. And it, yes, and when we are talking about this cashless or, or not cashless, we should be mindful of the fact that what happened with 3. Point something, uh, uh, 3.2 or 3.3 .3 trillion naira money in circulation, and it's only 1. Point something trillion naira in the banking system. The danger is detrimental to the economy and the security of this country. So we must support this cashless. How much money is it in the rural areas? 80 percent, 80%, 80%, you know, of, 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 of the money sector is in the urban area. So all what we are saying that the issue is matter of security, is matter of technology, is matter of, you know, uh, 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 these communication gadgets. So it is not it is not just financial. We are looking at it purely financial. It's beyond that, sir. Because leave to me, today I will recommend the highest denomination to be 100 naira. The highest. And we that's the only way we can even de-dollarize the Nigerian economy. We are killing ourselves by accumulating dollars in our houses, you know, and then and and, 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 then, and then killing the naira. The more you kill the naira the more you damage the economy of this country. So, Mr. President, you know, I so much support that we should go with the cashless, in fact, with the present system that, 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 that the CBN has adapted. Thank you very much. Adamu Mohamed Bunkachua, representing Bauchi North Senatorial District. Now, this topic, to me, is as important as review of the Constitution, if not more. Because the review of the Constitution, the exercise was done and it was truncated by state governors in accordance with your own press conference. But this one, if allowed to continue as it is, Mr. President, it will not be good for the country and even the so-called security that some speakers are advocating and saying that it will enhance security. It will not. In fact, it will go directly, diametrically opposed to security because there are local people that are dependent on daily markets as their means of survival. And the farmers in my constituency who engage their, on their farms dry season and rainy season, they need a lot of money. And all their farmland, farm hands, are paid on daily basis. Every day, I will take my own farms as an example. Every day, as I sit here in this chamber, I have every day not less than 100 people, laborers, working on my farm. And they have to be paid by 5 o'clock. Cash, of course, they don't possess POS. They don't have bank accounts. So well, how do, does the governor... Why don't you encourage them to have bank accounts? <laughs> the last UBM branch in my, in my constituency was closed six years ago, and I spoke with the uh, stakeholders and owners of UBA, they refused to reopen that branch. So where would, how can I encourage them? 
So the banks, are, we are underbanked, and they don't want to open rural branches because they are only after profit. So if, you try, if the central bank tried to tax and milk my local population, they will revolt. And it's not good for the governance. It's not good for the polity. So, and the recommendation this committee has done. Before you, go, before you go to the recommendation, let me just ask you this. As I understand it, the policy as presented excludes. Just let, just let me finish, sir. Let me finish. I want, I want to be sure that you are aware of this. And in most of those rural committees trying to pull wool over the eyes of Nigerians. What they just, they just said that uh, they recommend to the central bank. We haven't had central bank recommendation, and I mean replies. And they will, knowing central bank that I have dealt with through co uh, uh, other committees, they will just keep quiet and continue and go ahead. And what would the committee say to us? So this recommendation doesn't make any sense to the Nigerian people and to me as a senator. Thank you very much, Mr. President. CBM policy. In our state, we have done this for 10 years. I, I will only go for the recommendation. Central banks should reconsider their decision and put us back the same amount they had in Abia, Lagos, Kano. They should do 500,000 per day for individual, and they will do 3 million per day for corporate. That will cover any fear of anybody. We have done this in our state for over 10 years. With all the amount of industries we are running in Naba. We have done 3 million per day. So I don't see why they should come to 100,000 a week. It's like crying. Go back to 500,000 a day, 3 million to corporate, and 500,000 a day for individual. And nobody will complain. Senator Bukashua will not complain for his farmers. We have people in sugarcane farm that are paid every day. Both Senator, Senator Alero will not cry in his rice farm. I know these people are crying because we have to pay workers daily. There are some daily workers that you have to pay money daily. So my colleagues, let's not uh, be hide. I'm a vice chairman of this committee. And to me, it makes a lot of meaning that we protect Nigerian people than protecting ourselves. Did you, and did you sign the report? I signed the report. Yes. OK, thank you very much. I, I, uh, chief Whip, I only recognize you because you are the Chief Whip. As a member of the committee who signed this report, I frankly should not be recognizing you. But uh, go ahead. Okay. All the same. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm not saying, what I'm saying is that 100,000 a week is too small. For a three, uh, is that 3 million a week for a corporate is too small. Make it daily. We have done this in 10 years in our state. In that. And when it was minority opinion, no, I'm coming. I didn't want to rock the boat because. You cannot come here and fight your committee, uh, Chief Whip. It's, it's not right. Uh, don't throw your committee under the bus. It's not right. What is visible for people to do their business? Thank you very much. Mr. President, that people should understand from the report of the chairman. The chairman did not say this is their recommendation in terms of money. No. But that is what the CBM stated. No, 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 no. No, it's not the committee. It's not the committee. No, oh, wait, wait. No, this is exactly what the CBN says. That's what the CBN gave. But if you want a recommendation, then now you can advise the chairman. And the chairman, when he goes back, 
he can discuss with the CDM on what we want to do. For example, now. No, wait, wait. Let's just understand. No, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Leader of the Senate, please address. Address the chair, please. Of course, the prerogative of doing this is with the CDM, because according to their act, they have to do this. But what we can do is only to advise the chairman to go back and tell them this is what they will do, and then they will do that if they want to do and, 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 and that's expressly provided in the second recommendation. Yeah. So I think that's good, sir. Yeah. Um, I represent Ekiti South and Mr. President you, as you will remember when this issue came out not one person had a dissenting voice everyone that spoke on that day agreed with what the CBN was about to do however we were also skeptical of certain issues contained in the proposals number one the details are, were not clear to any of us. And that is because in the system, people take each other for granted. If there had been consultation, wide consultation, we wouldn't be where we are today. People would have gotten to know what is required of them and what is required of the CBN. And this speaks to what we are all going through. There has to be consultation on major issues such as this. In the report, there is a clause that says massive consultation will be held between now and the 9th of January. Mr. President, that's only two weeks. And there is this festive period in between. How can you have a massive consultation in, in those two weeks? The timing is wrong. Um, again, Mr. President, the CBN approved POS, um, POS, uh, operators and registered them and took monies from them no matter how little and now those people can only do so little it took so many people off the roads it took all our employ unemployed graduates off the streets now they're going to be thrown back with this policy if an amendment is not done mr president there's a big elephant in the in the room why is this happening during an election period? Why is it that it is coming now when we have an election just a little over a month ahead? There is a need to be flexible in what we are doing now so that this thing... Do you want that flexibility because of the elections? Is it because of the elections you're making this plea? Or because you believe that Nigerians are suffering? Which is it? How will the people in that bank be able to manage? And beyond it all, the election, how will we be able to control the logistics of taking people around, the, uh, paying for uh, transportation during the campaigns and the elections? There is something that is happening. We're just hoping. Senator Lujimi, if I may add, I don't know more than you know. But from what we have seen and what we have read and what is contained in this report, this is an equal opportunity policy. It is not a policy that is targeted against one group against another or one party against another. It's equal opportunity. It affects everyone in equal measure. The last I checked. And then, uh, finally, before you sit down, let me just point this out. Whatever we do, let us not lose sight of this section 2D and 47 of the CBN Act. We made this law. It's an act of the National Assembly. If we wanted to give the National Assembly members the power to compel the CBN to sit down with us before decision, monetary policies are, are decided. I'm sure we would have so provided. But as it is right now, we gave them the full independence, plus one to these two sections of the CBN Act, to do justice. So we must not lose sight of that. 
And in any event, for purpose of consultation, they've already come out in the report. That we have our committee on uh, banking here. In the second recommendation, we're going to empower them to continue to interact and consult with the CBM management. And in the first recommendation, even though we're here to get there, they've already, already recommended flexibility. The only, and, and I think I accept that. I mean, I'm comfortable with that. I'm sorry, yes, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. The only thing I'm not comfortable with is the idea of we fixing an amount. We don't have, we don't have those powers without due respect. It is something that, excuse me, it is something that our committee headed by Obasani. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, on some of the things that I wanted to talk about. But I just want to say that uh, my main concern is really the reason the CBN is giving for this, uh, the demonetization policy and then the push towards the cashless policy. The CBN said it's meant to do three things. Uh, uh, fight inflation, uh, fight corruption, and then uh, introduce a cashless uh, uh, policy. But uh, Mr. President, uh, if you look at uh, the statistics from CBN themselves, when Senator Yusu says that uh, it's dangerous to have three point something trillion uh, cash in the economy, I want us to understand that uh, you know, not all three trillion is actually cash outside the banking system. I think what's outside the banking system is actually about 2.3 trillion. And with what the CBN is telling us in the last week that they have mopped up one trillion, it means only about 1.3 trillion is left. Mr. President, there's about 50 trillion money in circulation, uh, out of which narrow money is about 22 trillion. This was created by the CBN themselves. You know, in the last seven years, Federal government has borrowed almost 22 trillion from the Central Bank of Nigeria, 7,000 percent increase. And uh, you know, if you have a situation where you say you need to uh, reflate the economy because I uh, want to fight the effects of COVID, want to fight the effects of the Ukrainian war, globally, everybody that took that step knew that it was going to cause inflation. We are not alone. Inflation in Nigeria is 20 percent. We are among the best in terms of inflation on the African continent. Ghana is 50 percent. The two super economies in the continent, Ethiopia, Rwanda, they're all above 30 something percent. Britain today has an inflation rate of 11 percent, coming from an average of 2 percent. That's an increase of about 450 percent. For us to get to where Britain is today, we have to get to about a 60 percent inflation rate. Nobody is uh, fighting cash in that uh, respect. My fear is that the fixation on cash is really, really, uh, uh, you know, having a negative impact on the rural economy. Because uh, we're talking about uh, cash in circulation, if you look at what they say, it's only about 2 or 3%. If we continue to attack 2 to 3% of the money that is available out there, how do we affect inflation? If what they are saying is true, Mr. President, by end of this month, with what they have mopped up, we should see at least a 7 percentage point in inflation rate. If it doesn't happen, then we should take out inflation as one of the reasons that we are introducing this uh, cashless policy. Secondly, uh, uh, Mr. President, if for 12 or for 10 years we have introduced a cashless policy and we still have so much money outside in circulation, and then we are touting our position in the digital uh, uh, transfer world and whatever, it means that the two can co uh, coexist hand in hand. Yes, we have been successful. We have moved so much transactions onto you, and yet these people are still. You can't force people out of what they are used to. And when uh, the report says that uh, you know it has been uh, incentivized, there's no incentive. Every time the CBM comes out to address this catch thing, it's always being punitive. We are putting penalty on this. You cannot force people to do that. Nobody forced Nigerians to embrace the mobile phone culture. But now almost everybody has a mobile phone. And in the same vein, uh, Mr. President, if we try to force people to do something that they are not used to, it just creates a black market. It creates an economy. Right now, I have a letter from POS operators. There are 1.4 million POS operators in Nigeria and counting. They are making a living out of providing cash, out of filling in the gap that banks have failed to do in the last 15 years. Because CBN has failed to meet its financial inclusion target. Now, in one fell swoop, we're taking them out of business. 1.4 million people. 
between the police, the immigration, civil defense, we have barely managed to create 30,000 jobs in the last seven years. For us to now say this 1.4 million people that are earning a daily living do not matter, I think it's very, very dangerous. Uh, uh, it's probably more dangerous than whatever it is that we're trying to address, uh, Mr. President. So uh, please, I think we should, we, sh we, we should exercise caution. Thank you, thank you. This issue on uh, the first time, on this uh, cash, uh, the, uh, the policies of uh, CBN, I spoke here in total support of the independence of the CBN. Yes, uh, the, the, uh, I'm, I'm coming, Mr. President. Uh, has, has that changed? Has the law changed? To say that we support the law we make, we have to stand by them. But if there are issues, new issues that are cropping up in a society, it is the duty of the legislature to make suggestions. Because, you see, each time you make law, you don't make law that solves all problems. That's why we're doing amendments. We make the laws at, the, at that particular time, it's through the time. But when things change, you also change. This is not an amendment. This is not an amendment. No, not that. This is not an amendment. Uh -huh. You say the policy we have given the CBN power to do, yes, very perfectly, because it's going to solve problems as a result. But we're solving these problems now. If we follow it the way it is, strictly censor, it means we are going to create another problem. One is unemployment. There are people who are already making a living out of this, out of uh, the POS operation. <laughs> the, the informal economy, a part of, part of income, informal economy. What are you going to do with them? We know the problems we already have here as a government that we cannot create the jobs we need. We don't have, we can't create the jobs. So if we can't create the jobs, we will not take the jobs already that are existing. That's what we are saying. I'm, I'm also suggesting here that, you see, we have Isusu. Isusu, this is a financial contribution, daily contributory. Uh, 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 services that are done in the rural areas. What are you going to do with those people who are doing that? You know, and these people, if they are going for a market, if they are going for a market on a market day, they go to the people who they collect this money for them for safe keep. And, and go and do safe keep where? Those people, they go to the banks. Aha. Uh -huh. We want that. We want them to go to the banks. Uh -huh. Suggestion, Mr. President, is that. The committee we have put in place here we will go back and talk with the CBN to relax the, this measure in terms of coming down the 150, 20, 20,000 uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, uh, 20, per day for all these people that have the informal economy of this country is, is not sustainable. If we do that, and I know, and in the report you have said here, you said they are going to consider, you know, flexibility. That flexibility is what we want our, our friend and brother Obasani to go back and ensure that that flexibility is introduced. With, with this thing, with the, the information they're getting from us here, both here and the House of Reps, is enough because we are representative of the people that they uh, retouch this in so that we will have the face. A human face in this implementation. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am not a member of this committee, but when the chairman was presenting the report, I listened very attentively and also read along. First, I'd like to commend the committee for a very extensive, detailed report that they have presented. I think that um, for me, there are some aspects that uh, have been exposed concerning the gains we have made you know, so far in the implementation of this policy. I am aware, and I know we are all aware, that this policy had been in force for some time, as indicated in the report. But the implementation had been gradual. And we have to call a spade a spade Nigeria is part of the global financial system, and we must also make progress. From the reports, we have been told that um, Nigeria is a leader in real-time payments, that that fact is undisputed. 
and we must be making progress. I agree completely that we lack adequate critical infrastructure to support the cashless banking policy, but we must continue in the implementation of this policy because of the gains that we all know. Even though there are challenges, it is true that there are challenges, but we have to make progress because this is the only way to go. And it is the global practice that is enforced. Nigeria cannot do it differently. We must start from somewhere. This point we are now, we have to progress from this point. Fortunately, the committee has also recommended that CBN must, must, as a matter of fact, I, is here, uh, uh, um, recommendation one, is supporting considerable adjustment in the withdrawal limit. That is the threshold should be adjusted in line with public outcry. So I think we are good to go. We are good to go. CBN is not existing in the air. CBN will always respond to the yearnings and aspirations of the people of Nigeria. So let us adopt this position of the committee and move on. After all, we all know that when it started, some of us could not you know, embrace uh, the internet banking. Today, everybody is doing it as very convenient and comfortable. You know, we are enjoying it. But initially, because of scarcity, you know, and apprehensions, fear that you may be defrauded and all that, we are running away from it. But today, every, virtually everybody is enjoying it. So let us... I'm sure even Senator Bukachua is doing internet banking. No. You are not? No. <laughs> this such as this is being put in place. And why is it... Uh, punitive. It's punitive because of the conditionalities that they attach to them. Mr. President, we must promote progress. We must encourage prosperity. The reason why we must do that is that we must ensure that our society progresses. We must also ensure that those who make efforts to earn additional living and help others who are unable to help themselves should be encouraged. That is how society progresses. Now, when you look at the conditions that CBN has put in their policy, to me it appears very punitive. How the money comes about, how the money is to be taken, and limitation on what people should do with their hard earned money. I think even in, in, in the global best practice, it does not exist. We must find a way to remove that so we do not deter people from progressing. Having said that, Mr. President, quickly, um, our rural bankers cannot survive this policy somersault. Why? Because the basic infrastructure in our rural area does not exist. Most places you cannot have access to internet. However, because of the progress and the organic way that internet's uh, mobile phone has grown, it grew because people found it necessary. It was comfortable, it enhanced their way of life, and so people embraced it. The same will happen to cashless policy uh, e-banking when over time organically people will embrace this but forcing people to do that will just create a situation where our homes particularly rural dwellers and elders their pillow cases will become their banks they will not have need we are trying to discourage that that's what this policy is targeting her. discouraging people using their pillows as uh, piggy banks Mr. President, if you do not give them the enabling environment, if you do not give them the enabling infrastructure, if you do not give them enough time, if you do not sensitize them for them to understand how that benefits them, they cannot change it. We need to, as much as cashless policy is a good one, it's a good policy without proper, without adequate preparation, and at the wrong time. And I think we need to address this. Finally, Mr. President, I, I want to say also that 
the same law that we made, Section 8 and Clause 4, says that CBN should extensively consult with National Assembly on changes in the policy or new policy. And I think that's a very sensible thing to do. Because our policies, we must think it through. We must analyze it. We must consult with our constituents, with our constituents before it comes to be. Waking up in the morning and announcing to us why policies such as this should be implemented within a, a time frame of three months, two months, I think is unfair and shouldn't be. Draconic policies should not have a place in our lives, Mr. President. I so submit. Thank you very much. There is no policy that is 100% free from uh, ECOPS. Now, when we continue to say that the rural area will be cut out for and all this type of thing, there is no, we can never uh, implement any good policy. The, I'm beginning to feel that some of the points we are saying that the POS, the CPN Act did not forbid the POS that POS will not operate. But when we are not giving the pressure that the policy is killing the POS, which means that uh, we are saying uh, uh, opposite of what the CBN Act is saying. They always said they would reduce the amount they will give out. If, for instance, 100 people come to POS every day and they collect 200, it's not okay. Instead of collecting 200 every day, you can collect uh, uh, 100 naira. It doesn't mean that it's calling, killing the POS. And the act of the P uh, the this um, 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 bill did not say that the, uh, the policy is sacrosanct, that they are not going to change. Let us give it a chance, according to the CBN, something that if it works well, then it will continue, then we can not say we digitalize Nigeria. If it doesn't work well, then we can have an amendment. But when we are not trying to say, we know this policy should not work, should not work, when we have not even tried it, it's not the best thing for the country. Let us try this thing and see. Even when they came with this uh, internet back thing the, uh, the other time, many people kicked against it. Now we are here. There was what certain time they raised the act of the CBN here. Most of all killed the act. Now the CBN, the CBN is acting according to the act that we approve for, for it. Why cannot can, why can't we not give the policy a chance to survive? Let us try for some months and see what it is. We cannot even know. It's possible those of them who were keeping their money in their in their in their briefcase <laughs> we we bring it out. So it it uh, for me, Mr. President. Let us give this policy a chance to thrive as we move. I think I need protection there. Oh, okay, good. You heard that, right? Uh, Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, all of us here, including the House of Rep, we all come from rural areas. Both the officials of the Central Bank and the president, all from rural dwellings, from rural origins. And we know what it means there. And not that we are sitting down under the comfort of AC, here, here and there, we forget that we have problems at home. You know what we are suffering when you are campaigning now? And I know what I'm suffering. We are still going back to the origin. A policy like this was introduced in 1984 changing of currency, 84, 85, I was in our own station. I knew what your people suffered on water when the security agents were robbing them of their money they are bringing from fish to, to put in the bank and change the currency. This is going to happen to our people too because the educational period is not given to them. We are their representatives who we'll have gone to meet them. We are not in the military regime. The, our people need a lot of time and education to be giving them, uh, them in the rural areas so that they are not going to have problems. It is me and you that we suffer it when we get back finally and when they are having financial difficulties. In the rural areas, particularly the local government, out of the 774, hardly can you see half of them having a bank in their headquarters. Most of the bank has liquidated, have liquidated and they have gone. What is replacing them now is POS from rural dwellings. Automatically, if rural areas, uh, if POS is allowed to be free with the money and be sent to the bank the way they do it, our people will not have a problem. 
if you are targeting this policy at some elite societies, it is the rural dwellings that we have problem because the elite society know how to circumvent laws. About, about withdrawals or about deposit? <laughs> Mr. President, the policy may be good, but the timing is wrong. And the period given for education is wrong. We are not a military regime. You have to consult. And the massive consultation was not done. You cannot impose law, particularly in financial law, into the rural society and it will not work. Most of all these people that are saying they want it today, they want it tomorrow, most of their people are carrying cars up and down in the bush and on the road. We, are, we need to educate them that it's dangerous to do it and they will comply. It is not the law from Abuja or Lagos that can change them. Then, uh, with all due respect, sir, the POS that was given 20,000 per day, uh, private, 100, not 150 again, cooperate affairs, 500,000. Are we in the primary school? <laughs> are we students that uh, we are? You are free to deposit your money anyhow without any interest. You can deposit trillions into the banks. And when you want to withdraw, somebody will say you cannot take 100 million out of the 1 billion you have deposited. No query. When you now want to withdraw, what, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do? It's not normal in any free economy. Even in America, it's not done. You can be queried, you will explain. How much cash can you withdraw in America? We are an American. I've never been to America. So, <laughs> as much as you like, as much as you can, I know, in as much as you don't, you don't finance uh, crime and fraud. Two hundred thousand dollars. How much is it in Nigeria here? That's in millions. Automatically, we should look at our society before we start draconian law. Even the CHBN uh, governor is from a bush there. I'm from a bush. All of us should go back to the bush, bring all the, bring all the public opinion. Then we can, at most, our laws. It is the public opinion that most our law that the people will respect. So, my dear president, let us take it easy with our people. The law may be targeted at this and that. We don't mind, but our people will not suffer too much. Of course, not my local government headquarters, my village. And I just POS people. I knew many of them there. If maybe, for example, one of my constituents said, OK, his wife is sick, one take. I said, please go to Mr. A O B, who a friend POS, and collect maybe 20,000 and take your wife to hostel. So if you say, OK, he's only entitled to about 20,000 per day. And if I have like 10, 20 of such sick people, what I am going to do, Mr. President? So we have to look at this one, and at least 70% of uh, the population in the country are rural people. So if we, unless if you want to kill all of them, and say, OK, well, and then at least if they are not, that's what we, why we're having bandits now. Of course, we have them in, the, I mean, particularly this uh, three or four states in the Northwest. So but if, for example, now we say, OK, we chop it completely, then what are we going to do? How can we help those people? So please, Mr. President, all what I'm saying, we should look at it, take time, not just abruptly and say, okay, this is what we want to be done. So at least we should think of our people who are in the rural area so they will not suffer. So I think this all what I want to emphasize. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senor Bakia. We'll go to recommendations. Say this, uh, Senor Bakia. We also want to protect our people in the rural areas from being attacked, you know, uh, by bandits, being attacked by armed robbers who believe that... Uh, as a piggy bank in their homes. I think the moment it becomes clear to everyone that uh, we've gone for, uh, 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 cashless, full blown, and there's no money being hoarded in anybody's house, uh, I think there will be reductions in armed robbery and uh, bandits uh, banditry attacks as well. That having said that, let's go straight to the recommendations. Recommendation one, that the Central Bank of Nigeria should considerably adjust the withdrawal limits in response to public outcry on the policy. Those in favor of the say aye. aye. They again say nay, the ayes have it. Recommendation two, that the committee, that's the uh, Committee on Banking, should continue to embark on aggressive oversight of the bank on its commitment to flexible adjustment of the withdrawal limit and periodically report outcome to the Senate. Those in favor of the say aye. 
Do it again, say nay, the eyes have it. The condition three, that the Senate should support the bank in the continuous implementation of the transformational payments and financial industry initiatives in line with its mandate in accordance with CBN Act. Those in favor of this will say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. <laughs> no, I, just, I just want to do my job. Huh? So we are joined? Okay, then you can go ahead. No need. Huh? Yeah. The only thing is that I move for, to, I mean, to stand down everything from the paper. Yes, every item on the agenda. Second. Second. Huh?